Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Uzoli Professional Wi-Fi Weather Station. This was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this weather station covers many things. It covers rainfall, outdoor temperature, outdoor humidity with trends, indoor temperature with trends, date time, moon phase, dew point feels like temperature, weather forecast, pressure, wind speed and direction. So as you can see, this covers a lot of stuff. Let's take a quick look at the end here. This is at a weird angle, but I'll read through it. It says the model FT0367, frequency is 433. So that's the frequency of the outdoor weather sensor. The Wi-Fi console frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. So this isn't going to work with five gigahertz. That's something to keep in mind. The outdoor transmitter interval is 16 seconds. The wireless transmission range in the open air is up to 330 feet or 100 meters. Input is 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz, 0.18 amps, US 0.25 amps. Output is 5.0 nine volts at 0.5 amps so this comes with lcd display console outdoor remote sensor power adapter for console mounting materials user manual power consumption the base station has three AAA batteries not included power adapter outdoor transmitter is three AAA batteries not included so let's get this open okay so here we have it so we have a decent sized manual here so it goes over all the different parts so i'm going to unload everything here first so this would be the console. So it has this kickstand that comes up. It has DC input on the side. It has a keyhole slot on here so you could hang this. On the front has snooze light, alarm, min max, set, and channel plus. I think that's all the buttons. Below that we have the sensor. So here are the mounting screws. Here's the power adapter. And this is the 5.9 volts at 0.5 amps. Here's the mounting bracket. So you'll clamp this to a pipe or pole outside. And you can mount this in the horizontal or vertical position. You could also screw this to a surface. So say you had a deck rail, you could screw this down and then you put the post in here. So there are lots of different ways to mount this. Let's pull this unit out. So this has a cup for the rain gauge, has the wind sensor, temperature humidity sensor, solar panel on the end. This is a little dusty. I'll make sure I clean that off before I put it out. We have the wind direction gauge battery compartment here, and here's the post. So I'm going to grab some batteries and a tool and we'll get this set up. Okay, I'm at the back of the console here. Now you can plug this in, but I think it's a really good idea to have batteries in here no matter what. In case the power goes out, you want to save the settings and such. Now I'm guessing this also has a battery only mode, so you probably press a button to have it light up. We'll get into that, but I am going to plug it in. Now I had trouble popping this out. I just got a flat headed screwdriver and stuck it in there and got it popped loose. And now it's loose now something was kind of hanging up on it so i have three AAA batteries here i'll put those in beeping there the display is on now I'll put three in here so this is double a batteries so this has a solar panel on it so when the sun's out that will power it and then it has the batteries to power it at night or when it's cloudy so this screw is not captive it doesn't stay in there so you want to make sure you don't lose it Okay, I don't know if I pointed out earlier, this does have a level on top of it to help you level it. So it's built in, a built-in bubble level. Okay, so the display is working right now. Let me zoom out, there we go. So it looks like it's picking up the sensors. Let me plug this in so it doesn't shut off on us. There we go, and I'll peel off the protective film. There, that looks nice. So here it looks like everything's working. We have the rain gauge there. Now the way this rain gauge works is it's a cup and you don't have to empty it. I think we can probably rotate this to pull it out. And there's a little teeter-totter in here. I'll put this back in and rotate it to lock it in place. So I'll set that aside for a second. I'll get this set up to install outside. So this post is going to go into here. So we want to line up these two holes. Don't think it matters which way this goes. Okay, so those holes are lined up. We'll go into our hardware bag. There's going to be two of these small machine screws and nuts. If we look on this side, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little spot here for the nut. So I'll put the screw up through that. I may need to screw this in. Okay, I got that tightened down so you can see the nut on the back side. We'll do a similar thing on the bottom here. I want to mount this to a horizontal pipe. So I'm going to press this in here. I may have to press it pretty hard. Yeah. Okay, so I set this down and put all my weight on it and I got it to go down. So I'll do the same thing here with the screw and the nut. So this is the hardware I have left. I'll be using these four screws and nuts. The other screws I'll put away. This does look like stainless hardware, but I'm not 100% sure. So this will go through these holes in the top. We'll go in here and the nut will fit in this recess in the bottom plate. So 
so it'll look like that on the top and on the bottom this will fit in like this and that will fit around a pipe or tube so i'll set that aside for now so i'm going to install this outside i'm not going to film installing it but i'll show it after it's installed it's just hard for me to hold the camera while putting all these screws in but it's pretty straightforward then i'm going to read through this manual and then i'll come back and i'll demonstrate how to use all this okay so i have the sensor mounted on this play set here so i clamped it to this pipe i leveled it on top best i can it's tilted this way just a tiny bit. I could put a shim down here, but it's pretty level. It's very level. I face the solar panel to the south so the sun will hit it. That will also help orient the wind direction. So you can see it's measuring the wind speed direction right now. So let's go inside and take a look at the console. So next I'm going to hook it up to Wi-Fi. So you can see Wi-Fi is flashing down here in the lower left. If it's not, you can hold down the middle button, the min max minus button for three seconds, and that will turn it into the Wi-Fi mode. So now we'll head over to my computer and I'm going to select the weather home Wi-Fi access point. Once that's selected, I'm going to go into my browser. I'll type in http colon slash slash 192.168.5.1. I'll hit enter. And here we can set up Wi-Fi. So this will connect it to our home Wi-Fi. I'll hit these three lines here. This will pull up any Wi-Fi signals in my area. I'll pick the one I want. I'll enter in the password. I'll scroll down. We have the weather server set up. So this is for weather underground and weathercloud.net. So you can set up to send your information to those services. Then I'll go to time zone setup. I'll change this to my time zone, which is central time US and Canada. I'll keep this check where it says automatically adjust the clock for daylight saving time and I'll hit save. It says, please wait. The device will try to connect to the Wi-Fi router. I'll hit close. So here it says the connected IP is 192.168.7.168. So I'll want to copy this so I can get back to this page. So I'll go to my Wi-Fi settings on my computer and I'll switch it back to my normal Wi-Fi router that I normally use. And now we're back to the setup page. So next on here we have weather setup and we have two options here, weather underground or weathercloud.net. So I'll do weathercloud.net. So I'll open that up in a new tab. So I'm going to create a new account here. Okay, so I created a new account. It sent me an email to activate the account, so I did all that. So now I'll hit Create Device, and I'll fill out all of this information. I'll start here on things that are not private, then I'm going to skip to the next page. So we'll go to the model. I don't see it here. I see this UC Tech has an FT series, and this is the FT0367, so I'll try that. Link type is Weather Setup. So now I'm going to fill out the rest of this information. Okay, so now I have my devices listed. I'll click on settings and go to link. So here I'll have the weather ID and the key. So I'm going to enter that in on the weather station. So you'll want to sign up on one of these sites and you'll register the device and they'll give you the ID and the key. So I have the weather ID and the key for a weather cloud net. I'll enter that in. I'll hit save. It says successfully saved. Please wait. The device will try to connect to the Wi-Fi router. I'll hit close. So now I'll go to weather cloud. So I'll try refreshing this page. It's asking me if I want to upgrade. I'll close this. Okay, so I have my devices listed here. I'll click on it. I called it weather station. So here we have my weather station. It lists all the information. I had to blur a lot of this out for privacy reasons. So I went into the settings and went to preferences and I changed it to imperial measurements, which is what I use on a daily basis. So we can see the temperature here and that lines up with the weather station. So we can look at current. So this is going to keep stats on it. We have daily min max, we have wind, we have the average speed and gust. If we scroll down, we have wind direction, average wind direction, wind distribution, average wind speed, and we have inside temperature. We have inside temp, dew point, heat index, and humidity, thermal comfort index, and we have evolution. So this looks like it's going to track history. So I just connected this up. So over time, this should track this. So we have day, week, month. If I scroll down, we have humidity atmospheric pressure, wind speed, wind direction, and rain. So lots of great detail here. So you can sign up on Weather Cloud and Weather Underground at the same time and have it send information to both. So let's head back to the weather station now. Okay, so that's the main setup of the weather station. When we connected to Wi-Fi, it automatically set the time. So this is set up with a time server now, so it will automatically maintain that. Setting it up on the Weather Cloud or Weather Underground really takes this weather station to the next level. It gives you a lot more information than they can provide on this interface. You can also check this stuff when you're away from home you can just log into your account and see it there's lots of things you can track on there so aside from that you can get a lot of information on here so i'm not going to go over everything because there's a lot of stuff in here the manual covers it but we can press set and we'll go through the different modes so here we're on the time uh, i don't really have anything to do here i'll hit set again and then we'll go to rain and then we can hit min max channel to go up and down between the modes here so we can see how much rain we've had over a period of time so the total we've ever had is 3.9 inches in the last hour, we've had zero. 24 hours, we've had 1.65. This week, we've had 1.65. In the month, we've had 3.91. So I'll switch this to, I kind of like 24 hour mode. So I'll hit set again, and here we have pressure. So we're at absolute pressure. We can switch this to relative or absolute, set again. Here we're on the dew point. We can change it to the feels like temperature. 
So, and I guess I should sh show what we can do with time here. So we have the time date. We can show, looks like we have the year, the time, the day, the week, so. So if we press the snooze light here, we can dim this thing. So this is completely black. Now you can see it a little bit, but that's reflected light. If I turn the lights out, this would be completely black. So I hit it again. This is the lowest light mode. This is medium and this is high. So if you have this in your bedroom and you're trying to sleep, you can turn this completely off or at least the backlight on. So I do have this plugged in. I'll unplug it because this doesn't absolutely need to be plugged in, but I really do like the feature of being able to plug it in. But now it's dark because it would drain the battery if this was on all the time. So I can hit snooze light and this will stay on for a few seconds so you can read it and then it will go back into its low power mode. There we go. So there are a lot of settings on here. So if you hold down set, you're going to go in the setup mode. And I'm not going to go over all of these. Some are obvious like 12 hour. This is probably just change it to 24 hour mode. So I can hit channel up or down to change that. But I don't know what all these are. You can set the time, although we have a time server doing that. Date. But you can go through the manual to see exactly what all these are. Here's Fahrenheit, miles per hour. So these are units. So lots of settings here. So there are features I'm not going to cover, but I do want to mention them. This has a lot of alarm modes on it. So it has traditional alarm clock modes. So you can look through those in the manual, but these are the modes it has. It has time, alarm one, two, wind gust, wind average, outdoor temperature, outdoor humidity, outdoor feels like temperature, outdoor dew point, hourly rainfall, 24 hour rainfall, absolute pressure, relative pressure, relative pressure, looks like it's on there twice, indoor temperature and indoor humidity. So you can set alarms for those things. So say you have flowers and you're concerned about them freezing. So you could set this up so if the temperature drops to a certain low temperature, you can have this sound an alarm and that will alert you so you could say go cover your flowers or something. Or maybe if you have heavy rainfall, it will alert you so you can go check your sump pump or some other pump system. So this also has calibration features that are listed in the manual if you need to do any calibration on it. So that's the Uzoli Wi-Fi weather station. This is a very versatile weather station and it has rain, wind, pressure, outdoor, indoor temperature, dew point, forecast. It has all the features you would expect in a higher end weather station. But since this connects up to the internet, it takes it to the next level. So it'll be really nice to go online and look at trends in our area. This will help with things like watering the garden so I can see how much it's been raining over the past few weeks. I can also look at temperature trends, humidity, things like that. I like that this gives you so many options on doing things. So you can go in the interface itself and look at trends or you can go online. I like that this plugs in or has batteries that gives you many options. So something like this would also make a great gift for someone who's into gadgets and things. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.